everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. You know, it amazes me how much information lives inside a raw image, and as the technology gets even better, photographers seem to have more and more options in post-production. Let's take a look at this photograph. If I had the chance to shoot it again, I'd probably capture multiple exposures and create an HDR image. But alas, it's only a single image. The scene had some serious high contrast problems. Luckily, On One's powerful raw engine can bring back detail I originally thought was lost. Let's head over to develop and get started. Right now there appears to be almost no information in the sky. Although if I pull down the highlight slider, I can begin to retrieve some details. The highlight slider is subtle until you reach about 80%. Then it becomes pretty aggressive. So it's something I watch closely. I don't want it looking unnatural. About minus 84, 85 is good. I'll also boost the midtones a little bit and lift the shadows a tiny smidge here. And because I want to bring lots of detail into the landscape and the barn, I'll add some structure. Finally, I'll bring the haze down a little for some more cloud detail. This is another adjustment that can quickly overbake your image, so I like to use a light touch. That looks really good for a basic edit, but I want to try to get more detail in the sky. For that, I'll use a local adjustment. I'll stick to the default minus one stop option and use the masking bug to apply a gradient. Like that. The sky's looking a lot better, but I can see the mask is affecting the top of the barn. And I don't want that. I'm going to paint some of that out using a brush. I'll choose the perfect brush and set it to paint out. Now, the perfect brush is great for um, painting out small details. And so long as you leave the little dash in the center inside the area, that you are working in, it will not affect anything outside of that. So I'm being careful to keep that little dash on the inside of the barn so it does not erase any of the sky. And it's doing a really good job. And sometimes you have to do multiple passes, particularly if there are different textures involved, like on this. So if I take a look at the mask here, you can see what it's done here. Now I'm just going to go over this again so I can see what's happening. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, let's get out of mask view mode. And uh, once I've kind of done the minor details or the, the small details here, uh, I'll, I'll take the a uh, perfect brush off because it's doing a lot of mathematical calculations and it can slow things down and I don't need it in this area here. So like that. And again I'll view the mask and make sure I've gotten everything. I'll just go over these small little areas here. Okay, that looks good. So basically, when you choose a gradient mask or if you choose a vignette, you're not limited to just having that as the mask. You can combine uh, different shapes. You can paint in and out uh, in, in those areas. So there's a lot of flexibility. I'm happy with that. If I look at the before and after, I can see the sky details magically appeared. It looks really good. Now I'll head over to effects. First, I'll add a dynamic contrast filter. This image is screaming for detail, so I'll be pretty liberal with the settings. In the small, I'll bring that up to about 20 or so. Um, the medium, I tend to keep fairly subtle. And then large, about there. And then just so it's not too crunchy, I'll just bring down the opacity to about 75 right there. And there's the before and the after, and that looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to add a subtle texture, and it's one of my favorites for landscapes. I 
Uh, let's see, it's in the uh, paper category. And it's called Rice Paper Dark. And I like how that looks. Maybe I'll just bring the brightness up a little bit. Too about that. That looks really good. Next, I'll add a vignette. And let's try, let's try subtle. That looks pretty good there. Um, I'll just go into settings here and the protection of the midtones, which is called skin. Just pull that back a slight bit and maybe a little bit in the shadows too. I just don't want the edges to be too dark. So there's the before and then the after, and that's pretty subtle. Finally, I want to add a sunshine filter, but I'm going to use it like a subtle spotlight only on the barn. I want to highlight the red color to bring more attention to it. I'll use a mask to achieve that, but first I'm just going to set up the overall look. So I'll choose sunshine, and for the amount I'll do about there, warmth. I'm just eyeballing this to what looks good. And saturation, just a slight boost of that, and then the glow. Maybe about there. And then I'll bring down the opacity of this to about 40. That looks good. Now I'm going to create a vignette mask for this spotlight effect. So I'll go over to the masking bug. Actually, I'll select the... Click on the mask first. And then I will go over to the masking bug. And I'll choose center. And then click it pretty much in the middle of the barn. Okay, now I want to resize this so that it's just covering the barn area. About there. Now, at the moment, it's doing the complete opposite to what I want because it's lightening everything around the barn, um, and I want to invert that to do the opposite. And I want to bring down the, pad, the opacity on that. Don't know how that went back up to 100, but there you go. All right, so that's the before and after. It's a great way to just uh, very subtly um, highlight uh, certain things in your scene. So that looks pretty good to me. Now, um, what I want to do is uh, I want to get rid of a couple of things in the scene, like this thing on the ground, uh, my car down there, and the street sign. So I will use the um, perfect eraser for that. Now I'd be a little bit more precise with this if I was spending more time on it, but for the tutorial, I'm just going to do this quickly. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I think that looks pretty good. So if we look at the before and the after, you can see that the, the difference is pretty dramatic. And uh, we were able to get all that information back uh, into the sky and get some nice vibrance on the barn. As usual, I want to leave you with a quick tip. For that, I'll head back over to Browse. And we've got a grid mode. And let's say that I want to create a banner for social media. In this example, I'll size a photograph for a YouTube banner. I'll choose this image. And I'll take it over to Resize. Okay, so YouTube's recommended banner size is 2560 by 1440 pixels. So I'm going to document size here, choose custom. And then at the top of the photograph, you'll see that there's um, sp spaces to put in width and height. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to be 2560 by 1440. Okay, and that is what uh, the aspect is for the banner. So I can move that around. 
to how I want it. And then I commit to that by hitting apply. And then to export the image, you go down to the export button here. And I have a watermark um, set up on this, and I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. But down here, then you choose uh, file location and create the newly resized image. So that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.